the you know Chinese ar architecture, those characteristics like you guys already mentioned, the sloping roof, overhanging roof, wooden material, wooden carpentry, um, and uh, um, south facing orientation, and this characteristic had um, been going on uh, for a long time. For example, even in the um, Neolithic Stone Age architecture, we start to notice some of those um, characteristics. And um, um, the um, hierarchy in architecture is indicated by um, the roof style, by the number of bays, and by the size of the building, etc. So there, that hierarchical order is also um, very, um, very important. Um, so the courtyard um, allows a sophisticated organization of architecture um, using just one story technology. So primarily one story building, but using courtyard to organize the space and to create diversity and interesting kind of spatial um, experience. Um, you know, individual Chinese building can often be, in, uh, be um, divided into those tripartite division of a base, a wooden frame, and a very prominent roof. And that roof, you know, has those um, concaved curve and overhanging um, um, uh, eaves, and then interlocking brackets, wooden column, not inserted into the ground, but kind of floating on the platform in a stone base of some kind of socket, um, which allows a lot of flexibility for the shifting of weight during earthquake. And the roof style, uh, because the roof is so prominent, so Chinese architecture is very different from um, Western architecture, say, you know, Gothic um, church or Renaissance architecture for which you basically, you don't see the majority of the roof. They are hidden behind the facade or hidden behind the, the towers. But Chinese architecture, the roof is very visible and it is very symbolic as well. Um, the curve is calculated carefully. So this is one of the uh, issue we will talk about in future lectures, how these curves were being created. And it is tied to the structure, um, the structural um, logic of traditional Chinese architecture. And the bracket system, um, quite sophisticated, it, it helps to create the unique um, feature, um, not only structurally, but also in terms of decoration and color symbolism. Um, so this is the cutaway section drawing of a um, eighth century wooden hall. It shows the integrated nature of the, um, of the columns and the roof, as well as the kind of a floating wooden structure on top of a masonry platform. So, all right, I think um, I'm going to stop here. Um, maybe just using the last, this slide to show, um, you know, in this class, we are kind of also like recovering architectural history. I hope this is not just a presentation of material. I wanted to make this course like an exploration um, of the past of Chinese architecture and um, history has been rewritten by um, the updating archaeological material or kind of a document, uh, historical documents. Um, and for the study of our architecture, materials are available to different degree uh, for different periods. For example, for those early, uh, for those um, 
early Neolithic cultures, we only have archaeological record. There is no written document. So we rely entirely on archaeological record. But for some of the early dynasties, uh, like those before the Zhou dynasty, before the third century BCE, we have archaeological record. Um, and, uh, but we also have some kind of uh, old um, scripts, old writings that might give us some kind of a um, understanding about the architectural past. Uh, those oracle bone script, sometimes they have little pictures that resembles a, um, a, a structure. Um, and before the Northern and the Southern dynasty, which is the sixth century uh, CE, we have archeological record. We also have indirect materials. We don't have real kind of a wooden structure survived from that time, but we do have kind of a terracotta model preserved in tomb. We have uh, paintings, we have carvings um, that um, shows the image of architecture those are indirect materials for us to study architectural history. Um, the earliest masonry architecture in China survived from the, um, the sixth century, um, from the Northern and Southern dynasty. Um, it is a pagoda, it is a masonry, it is not a um, kind of a typical wooden hall. The real kind of a architectural example that fall uh, squarely into our understanding of classical Chinese architecture that is a wooden um, structure still standing is from the 8th century. Um, that is the earliest wooden structure survived in China and that is from the Tang Dynasty. So from that point on, we start to have the real example that we can observe directly. Before that, we rely on a lot of indirect materials and uh, uh, archaeological records as well. And uh, then after Tang Dynasty, that is the um, kind of a, um, the majority of um, traditional Chinese ar architecture survived uh, from, you know, after the 10th century, especially um, after the uh, 15th century. Um, that is the, the Ming and the Qing Dynasty. So um, like, uh, 90% of traditional Chinese architecture um, that are still standing uh, today are from the last two dynasties, that is the Ming and the Qing dynasties, and that is from the last 600 years. So, all right, um, so I think I'm going to, I'm going to first stop recording and, um, um, and we will call it a day.